Hi, my wood turning friends of the internet. Welcome back to my shop. You know, sometimes you'll watch a project and it doesn't quite get your attention right then, but you come back and see it a different time and it and it does. And that's what happened with this three cornered bowl. I watched it a few years ago and it's a good demonstration, but I wasn't interested in turning one at the time. And, and then I watched this demonstration again last week and uh, it changed it. And I thought, you know, this is going to be a good project for uh, for my audience, my my. A few friends to the internet, and I happen to have the right size wood on hand. So let's turn this fun three-quarter inch, uh, three-quarter bowl. Uh, you know, if you're tired of doing round and, and brown, this is just a perfect project for you. First thing you got to have is you need to have a cube like this. This cube is almost five inches square, but it needs to be milled fairly uh, uh, care carefully. Then we're going to mount it between, I won't say centers, but close to that. We're going to mount it here in the, uh, in the spindle in your Morse taper. Here we've got to come up with some, some way to turn it. There's a couple of possibilities. And the one I'm going to use, I'm going to use my Nova Live Center. Uh, let me get a knockout bar and, and knock out the, the safety center here. Well, let's get a little enforcement power here. I'll just put that right here, put that back. I'll, by the way, if you need a little knockout bar and you get involved in a plumbing project, this is the pull, the brass pull on your uh, sink, sink stopper. And it, if you get an extra one or have to replace sinks, this is a, a, a great knockout bar. Okay, so we're going to put this in, in here. And we're going to put this end and this end and this end and this end. And then we're going to tighten it up a little bit like that. Both ends are going to be turned away so we don't have to worry about this damage. This project does require uh, sharp tools, light cuts. So, And let's make sure that when it turns it clears. Because of the nature of this we want to keep our hands on the back side of this tool rest. I'm going to get it parallel with the lathe. Right, I'm going to put a towel, towel under here. And you can see the double image of those points as it comes around. We're going to develop a little more speed. We're going to turn a lot of air so the speed is our friend. Fairly well centered, so it's not uh, not vibrating much. I'm up to almost a thousand. So slice at a 45, and I think I'm actually going to turn this away. This wing right here. Now that I've removed this a little bit, I think I can get this a little more parallel. Get a little closer bowl support, bowl gout support. And I think I'm going to switch to a small bowl gouge. I'm going to go to a half inch bowl gouge. Again, we're slicing. See it's shaping up a little bit. It's got to be round all the way around, so we've got a good ways to go. Uh, here's a, our tenon's going to be a little bit lower than this end. I'll come in here. For this. So you really got to keep tightening it. I think I'm going to change my pulley to a faster setting since the max on this is only about 13, about 1300 in the uh, bowl torque range. So let's... Okay, I'm up to about 1600.
good. I'm getting close. Now let's try some shear scraping. Handle, handle low. Barely cutting on the bottom edge. If you get something out of this video, please hit the like button. Back to the video. Uh, I'm going to use a square tenon. I'm going to be using a Nova, or rather record power chuck, so I think I'm going to use my beating and parting tool. Comes flat in here, right here. Okay, I've got it down to whole about a half an inch, and that's as, that's as far down as I care to, to do it. So let's move that out of the way and let's get a flush cut saw. It's a handy saw. Let's twist that. Twist that off. Okay, there's our step one. 75 millimeter or 70 millimeter bowl jaws. They're especially good because they've got very wide, uh, they're very thick, so they got a nice wide flat surface. Plus, the dovetail uh, allows you to really, really crank down. So, I'm going to bring up the tailstock again, depress that flat. The wood I'm using is Catalpa, don't know that I mentioned that. Got a little bit of a crack developed in the drying process, so I'm hoping most of that will go away as I come down. One tip is to use a felt tip pen. I'm going to put this felt tip pen, I'm going to do the inside right here. Okay. Because there's a certain amount of this ink that's going to uh, go away. I believe it could be sharper, so let's go sharper. Okay, let's go ahead and pull our tail stock back out of the way. Alright, let's get rid of this little button in the middle. Visit my Amazon shop is shown on the, the screen and also in the description below the video. And if you purchase something, I'll get a small commission. You can see that ghost image. Let's turn it off. Notice how carefully I pull that bowl gouge straight out. Being careful not to bump it against any of the wings. I'm getting a nice clean cut. Feeling pretty good about that. Crack goes from here to here, and it's coming in an odd direction. It's going to, uh, along the medullary rays as opposed to the grain. Pretty 
I got most of the crack there. Don't see any on the back side, so I think I'll be all right. I think most of that crack's going to be cut away. Yeah, I'll measure. Let's just measure from. Now, I'm cutting end to end grain all along the bottom, so I think I'm going to switch to my bottom feeder bowl gouge. This has got a fairly fairly blunt grind. Uh, I'll have a video a video to that uh, uh, dealing with this bottom of the bowl gouge. This is a 5 8 inch. It's a negative rake scraper, I didn't mean shear scraper, but I'm going to come in and just clean up the bottom a little bit. This is a finishing tool. finish on that. I'm, I'm happy with uh, with that. I'm going to sand most of this with the uh, with the lathe not running. Alright, I'm going to come in here with a 3 inch starting at 120 coming up here. I'm not going to be able to get out to the tip I think without losing the profile. I might have to come in here and sand in this area by hand but I've got a little bit of a tool mark here, a little bit at the bottom and that's what I want to concentrate on. If I had an air compressor, I'd blow it out. Now, with this crack, pretty deep, I think what I'm going to do is rub some uh, little shellac, little shellac on there and put a little thin, fill that crack a little bit before I go too much further, I think. So I'm going to do that by taking this off. I just don't want this to stain, so I'm going to use a little friction polish, shellac based, just to prevent the, the thin CA from dripping down and getting into the wood grain. I don't want it to get stopped by this shellac. Get that thin CA, kind of rotate this up just a little bit. I'm going to lift it up a little bit to get that kind of parallel with the bottom. See if I just can't get just a little bit in here. Got a little bit of a crack there. Try to get some of this dust and just rub it in there. And before it gets too set, use a little 120. Kind of sand it in place. I got a little bit of tear out where it had where it plucked up the grain, and of course I've got these marks. Ooh, I got a little bit of a. I'll say I've also got a crack, a little bit of crack there. I need to need to seal. All right, now let me show you my sanding trick. I've got a board of MDF, and I'm simply going to place place this on this flat surface. that to get these tips. Okay, let's go ahead and remove this and reverse chuck it. Now I'm going to attempt to use my vacuum chuck. I believe I've got those cracks sealed where they should not leak. This smaller one with uh, fun foam edge should be a nice uh, smooth soft surface. I 
I need to tuck, tuck that base under just a little bit, and I think I'm going to do that with a, just a bit of a shear scrape. So let's drop this handle and speed up just a little bit. And just drop the handle. And just give me that rounding right there. This is a uh, one-off from your typical uh, brown and round. Uh, I advise you to make sure you've got uh, you've had some bowl turning uh, experience before you get into this kind of project. It is a bit more more of an intermediate uh, project, so so take that in into account. Okay, suggestions for future videos? Leave them in the comments below. Y'all stay safe. Come on back here.